Welcome to the Avenue's special monthly broadcast of August Haven Live. I'm Steve March Torme. This is our monthly show dedicated to taking a deeper dive into an independent artist and their music. August Haven's mission for this programming is to support artists in our community and to create an atmosphere where the community can gather to enjoy friends, music, and all the finer things in life as curated by August Haven. Right now, this programming is radio only, but we look forward to the time when we'll be together again at August Haven for this monthly show. Keep it tuned right here. We'll be with you till 7 p.m. with lots of music and interviews. It's all made possible by August Haven. This month, we're joined by Kyle Megna. Kyle is best known to regional audiences as the frontman for Kyle Megna and the Monsoons. Kyle is here to talk about his latest collaboration with Dave LeBlanc, a keyboard and guitar player and frequent collaborator with Kyle. We welcome you to the Avenue today. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having us on. So let's start off with a quick history. Uh, Kyle, you've you've got a very enthusiastic following in our area. That's no secret. Your work with the Monsoons has earned you Best Alternative Rock Artist of the Year in 2017 and Best Male Vocalist in 2018 from the Wisconsin area music industry. You and I both know those are called whammies. But I understand that your collaboration with Dave LeBlanc started way before that. Tell us how the two of you met and started playing together. So I met Dave in 2004. I was moving to Tempe, Arizona. I was a lost 18-year-old kid. I was following my brother, Tony, there. He was going to school, and I was just going there to support him. Um, Anyways, I ended up meeting Dave. Dave was in Tony's class, and we became musical friends from there. He eventually moved into our fourplex, and we spent a year there. So Dave ends up in Wisconsin as your roommate. How did that go? Eventually, all of us moved back home. I moved to Wisconsin. My brother moved back to Wisconsin, and then he went to Tennessee. And then Dave moved back to Kalamazoo, Michigan. From there, I did a lot of convincing, and I got Dave to move back to Wisconsin, uh, where I was, and we started writing music together. We were in different projects. Um, We were two young musicians just having a lot of fun writing. So the two of you have been playing together since, what, around 2004? You're both back in Wisconsin, and what happens next? How did Kyle Megna and the Monsoons form? Uh, Was Dave, like, originally part of the Monsoons, right? Eventually, I moved to Tennessee for about five or six years, and then when I came back, um, we started the Monsoons, and Dave was a part of that. He was one of the original members. Dave and I have played many duo shows together, and we played multiple Monsoon shows together as well. And now your new project is Second Sons. We're going to dive into that in the next break. We're speaking with Kyle Megna about his new project with Dave LeBlanc, The Second Sons. I am SMT, and this is August Haven Live on 91.1 The Avenue. We're here until 7 p.m. with more interviews and music, including a performance set from The Second Sons in our 5 o'clock hour. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more in our next break. August Haven is a supporting partner of The Avenue. Let's take a listen to something that Kyle and Dave recorded back in 2014. It's called Lifted Weight of Worries. Let's hear it right now. All right, here we go. Today's the day that I open up my eyes. Show this world that I can't be surprised Embrace the time with my loved ones This worry can kill but in the best the underdog is Happiness begins, it begins with you
to the Avenue special monthly broadcast of August Haven Live. I'm Steve March Torme, and today I'm joined by Kyle Megnet. We're talking with him about his latest project with Dave LeBlanc, The Second Sons. As we discussed in our last break, the two of you have been collaborating since about 2004. Now, you released an EP in 2014 as a duo called Lifted Weight of Worries, which we just heard in the last break. Your most recent project is The Second Sons. So, Kyle, tell us how that came about. Is this something that came out of the last year or something that's been brewing for a while? So the Second Sons, this was a project that it kind of started as a COVID project. My brother and I, we had some songs we had written a few years ago and we put them on the back burner, never really did anything with them. And then with the lack of gigs and a lot more time to write, um, we decided, hey, let's finish this project. So I got the guys together. Um, we decided to go up to Withy, Wisconsin. My wife, her family has a beautiful barn up there. And we set up in the barn for three days and we busted out some songs. So tell us about the lineup. Who are the Second Sons? The lineup with the Second Sons are Fred Velpel on bass guitar, Dave LeBlanc on keys, my brother Tony Magna on drums, and myself, I play acoustic guitar, keys, and vocals. What does your collaboration look like? Do you, you two write together? So with COVID going on and obviously everybody lost all their gigs, um, for me as a musician, the silver lining is I had a lot of time to write and really get back to basics when it came to, to music. This is the best that I have felt in a long time writing music. Um, it really was just a check that needed to happen. And sometimes being a musician, playing multiple gigs a year, when I say multiple, I mean like 150 plus gigs a year, and then trying to balance the rest of life, uh, relationships, family, everything in between. Um, this just felt like a great passion project. It really reminded me of why I play music and a reminder to keep it that way. So the way that we collaborate when we were writing this project um, I pretty much come up with the skeleton of the song on acoustic guitar or piano, and then I bring that to my brother. My brother records it, he puts drums to it, and then we introduce it to Dave and Fred. And from there, the song, it just becomes alive. Um, everybody puts a significant part on each of their instruments, and I, I could not do it without them at all. This project is... These beautiful musicians, beautiful people uh, coming together around a simple song that was written on piano or guitar. So here's a quick clip of how one of your songs begins. This is 91.1 The Avenue's August Haven live broadcast. I'm Steve March Torme. We're going to be back with more interviews and live music until 7 p.m. August Haven is a supporting partner of The Avenue. Let's take a listen to the finished version of that same song. Yo 
This is Steve March Torme. You are listening to 91.1 The Avenue special broadcast, August Haven Live. We're back with Kyle Megna, whose latest project is The Second Sons. So, Kyle, your brother Tony plays drums as part of the group. Uh, he's what, a, a producer or a technical engineer? I know he's been an influence. So, give us some background on Tony and the role that he's played in your music. So, my brother Tony, he plays drums on this project, The Second Sons, but he does way more on this project. He's also the producer, and he's an engineer as well. My brother is four years older than me, and we grew up just playing music together. We set up drums in the basement, an electric guitar in the basement, and um, my family allowed that. So thank you, Mom and Dad, for allowing us to have a loud household. Um, I always looked up to my brother, Tony. I was like the little brother following in uh, his footsteps, so always wanting to do what he was doing. The final member of the group is Fred Velpel, who plays bass. He's one of the monsoons. Uh, tell us about Fred. Well, tell us what you can tell us about Fred. He plays bass guitar on this project. Fred is a very passionate bass player, and he recently started playing stand-up bass. The way the stand-up bass sounds with the rest of the instruments, the spacey keys, the acoustic guitar, the electronic drums, it really just complements everything and brings everything together about this project. Fred is a really extremely talented musician, and one of the things I like best about playing with Fred is that he plays for the song. Um, he sacrifices ideas, he does not have an ego, 
Uh, he's just a great guy to play music with, and that's why I've I've known him for quite some time now with the Monsoons and now in this new project here. That's the voice of Kyle Magna. I'm Steve March Torme. You're listening to 91.1 The Avenue. Stick around. There's more August Haven Live coming up, including a performance set at 5 p.m. August Haven is a supporting partner of The Avenue. Let's hear something from the Second Sons right now. Among these days we will shine, we will shine, we will shine. Among these days we will shine, we will shine, we will shine. Among these days we will shine, we will shine, we will shine. Among these days we will shine, we will shine, we will shine. shine. To the mountains, to the ocean blue. Daylight into darkness too Conflict, it can overcome you Streamline, we're gonna make it through can love and trust the thought of something that is greater than you to bring out all these issues to use Welcome back to the Avenue's special monthly broadcast of August Haven Live. I'm Steve March Torme. You know, as part of the monthly August Haven Live broadcast, August Haven chooses a nonprofit mission partner to support. This month, August Haven is supporting the Lawrence Community Music School. And to talk about that, I'm joined by Karen Bruno, Executive Director at Lawrence Music School. So the Lawrence Community Music School, formerly known as the Lawrence Academy of Music, has a rich history in Appleton. Uh, Karen, tell us about that. 
Yes, and before we were the Academy of Music, many of you who are in the community even longer know us as the Arts Academy, the Lawrence Arts Academy. These names, uh, these grooves go deep in us, but uh, in fact, our history is even longer. We um, actually have existed in some form since 1874 um, as part of the preparatory program of the Conservatory of Music. And at that time, it was primarily lessons given by faculty members to community folks who w wanted to either bone up on their their instruction or to participate in some way a lot of children but not not necessarily exclusively. Um, the community music school as we know it now really kind of developed into um, what we all know here now in the 1980s and 1990s when our programs really expanded. Um, due to a lot of uh, different things happening in the community, the Appleton Boy Choir had begun, um, some other community arts programs had begun and so um, the folks who were running the school at the time just decided it was time to expand our, our boundaries beyond the private lesson model. And so that's when we added things like the girl choir program and our bands and orchestra and early childhood music and music for those with special needs. So it really is much more of a comprehensive school now than it was in 1874, but we are pleased to have deep roots in the community. Karen, what is your history with the program and Lawrence University? So I started with the Girl Choir program in the mid-1990s, just a few years after it started. Um, and I was invited just to, to teach one of the younger choirs, and I loved it. Um, and at the time, we were, um, it was pretty small. It was maybe 125 singers total in the program. Um, and then um, sort of as we went along, we had students who were not ready to leave. They just said, well, yeah, we're, to, we're, we're supposed to age out, but we don't want to go anywhere. So you better figure out what to do with us. So... <laughs> So I sort of oversaw the, the growth of that program um, into what it is now. At that point, we stopped in eighth grade. And so now we have two, um, two additional choirs that go through high school graduation. And so that was a wonderful way for us to just, you know, make sure that we're providing those opportunities in the community. So my role here at the community music school really was a teacher for many, many years. Um, and I was still teaching in the public schools as the time, at the time as well. And then in 2010, I was invited to um, be the director of the community music school, then the academy. Um, and I've been serving in both roles ever since. So I, one of the things I, I said when I was asked to, to serve in this capacity was, but I don't want to give up my teaching. So can we can we figure out how to make that happen? And of course, the answer is yes, which I'm terrifically grateful for. The music school is for people of all ages. You know, and when we think of learning an instrument, we often think of that as being just for children. So tell us about the adult programs. Yeah, so pretty much almost anything you can think of that would be appropriate for children in music making, we can do with adults. Um, I think we're all learning, especially during this pandemic, how important it is for us to be part of community and um, for us to have things that help us grow both emotionally and mentally and frankly, just deepen our love in something that matters to us. And music does that for so many of us. And so private lessons are not just for children, they're for adults who are interested in, you know, tackling something new or revisiting a, a past love, as it were. If you've got a cello in your, you know, in your room from 30 years ago, it's time to pull it back out and see if you can still play it. Um, or, you know, finally time to pick up the guitar or the piano or the saxophone and learn how to do it. Um, those who are interested in making music in community have a wonderful opportunity um, through the Lawrence Conservatory that we partner with on our Gamelan program. So uh, an instrument of Balinese instruments um, that are uh, uh, made of percussive sorts of things um, and is all taught by ear. So one doesn't need to necessarily read music to participate. It's all taught orally. And so we have a wide range of, of those kinds of opportunities as well. Um, for adults with special needs, we have adults classes there as well. So um, for adults with different sort of disabilities, we, um, we try to serve as many folks as possible. What we don't do is we don't have an adult orchestra or band or choir because those things already exist in the community. Um, so we don't want to duplicate services. We want to just make sure we're filling the gaps so that everybody can participate in some sort of music making. Well, it goes without saying that the pandemic has had a huge impact on the music world. Tell us about what the Lawrence Community Music School has been doing since last March. Oh, goodness, really the name of the game has been innovate. <laughs> innovate with technology and um, as someone who has been for many many years a self-professed technophobe I have learned a lot <laughs> um, and really our goal is just to continue to keep our community of music makers together in some format making music um, and so that looks a lot of different ways um, our girl pro choir program transitioned to fully online because as we know singing can be a super spreader event and we don't want to get anyone sick um, so that's afforded us the opportunities to do different things than we would in a typical 
year. Um, we have uh, worked with some composers, some nationally known composers, to create music together um, with the singers in the room, you know, sort of songwriting workshops, that sort of thing. We've done collaborations with different choirs around the country on different projects um, and just basically, you know, tried to figure out the best way to make sure that we're continuing to grow skills um, and and build community. For our lessons, um, we have a few teachers who are doing lessons in person um, that, that's limited to piano and string instruments, again, for safety reasons, and we've implemented all sorts of safety protocol within our building. Um, and so those who are comfortable with our safety protocol and who would like some in person instruction. We're continuing with a little bit of that. Um, our young orchestra program um, divided into two small cohorts in a large room um, that was that has special HVAC filters and um, lots of lots of space to distance so that our, our players could be at eight feet apart. And then the two cohorts, we called them Roomers and Zoomers. So one week they were in the room as a small cohort with the teacher conductor, and the next week they participated via Zoom on mute, but playing into the sound that they were hearing from the, um, from the orchestra in the room. So basically we've done a lot of things um, and just tried to figure out the best way to keep people making music in a safe way. Um, our early childhood classes pivoted to a like a video podcast format, which was really fun. We've got some adorable footage and photographs from families who have sent us those as well. So we're just we're trying to just make sure that we can continue to do what we do and give people the opportunity to keep doing what they love. Moving forward in 2021, what does the future hold? What do you see? Gosh. I wish I had a crystal ball. We're feeling really hopeful about the advent of a vaccine. Um, Many of our teachers are starting to get it now as educators. They became eligible just this month, which is super exciting. Um, so I guess our hope is that we can see a slow return to something that resembled what we did before, that we'll have more in-person activities. Um, I think the summertime perhaps we'll be able to do some things outside with some distance involved. Um, again, it's a continual um, innovation game so that we can figure out how to make sure that we're keeping everybody safe but hopefully gradually see one another and make music in the same space sooner rather than later. So tell us about your student musicians uh, you know how are you staying connected and, and by the way we should let our audience know that you and I know each other because uh, my daughter Ruby has been with you for a number of years uh, but anyway tell us how are they staying connected? We really believe the most important thing for our students right now is to is to feel connected. And that, again, takes a variety of, of forms. Um, it might be just remaining connected to the ensemble that's been part of their lives for so long. Um, I'm graduating 15 seniors out of my high school girl choir this year, and many of them have been a part of that program for, you know, 10 years of their life. It's not an insignificant portion of their of their lives and of their world. So we're trying to honor as many of the traditions and customs as we can, just sort of reimagined a little bit so that they still have that the, those moments. Um, for our private teachers, I think that really the most important thing, again, is, is students knowing that they have another, well, for our ensembles as well and classes, just the students knowing that they have another adult in their life who cares about them and wants to remain connected. And so so while yes, of course, it's primarily about the music making and musical instruction and knowledge and skill development, it's really about the relationship as well and making sure our students know that, that there are other people outside their immediate family unit who love and care about them. What has surprised you the most about the past year? I think what surprised me the most about the past year is the way in which we've been able to do what we thought it was impossible. Um, you know, we're stitching together audio files and creating a chorus um, out of, you know, individual singers. Um, our youngest girl choirs had the opportunity to submit audio files and we put them together. And this is a group of singers who have never heard themselves as a choir because we haven't been able to do that all year. We put it together and played it for them in the rehearsal and their eyes got wide and their faces lit up as they heard themselves first as a choir in February. So after many years of, of being in the same virtual space to hear their voices really brought together as one was um, Frankly, it moved me to tears. It was incredibly impactful. Um, and so I guess that's the thing that, that surprises me the most is that there are ways we can do this and we've been managing to create those moments for our, for our musicians that may not be exactly what they had hoped for, but at least um, feel special and feel important and feel valuable. How can the community support your efforts? Well, <laughs> I think there are a lot of ways to answer that question. I think, you know, one of the things that... Um, 
that the arts are going to struggle with for a little while, frankly, is just sort of digging ourselves out of the hole that this year has created for us. And it's, you know, not unlike other other businesses or nonprofits. Um, but the simple fact remains that any time you're um, offering a program that has to do with singing or with wind instruments, it's going to take us a little while to come back to normal. And so supporting us in our future performances is going to be a wonderful way to show our support um, when we can, you know, begin to hold concerts again, buy those concert tickets, um, you know, s support us with a donation now so that we can cover some of the costs of our COVID remediation, whether that's we purchased air filters for every studio, we, you know, cleaning supplies and um, technology that we needed to put into place so that um, folks had what they needed to continue um, continue teaching. Um, and then, you know, just show us the general love, show up for it, you know, show up for stuff that's free. Um, we've got plenty of things that are free over the course of the year as well. And so just knowing that um, the community cares about us um, and values arts education in our world is, is really important and really means a lot to us. I'm Steve March Torme. We are back with Kyle Megna for our final hour of this August Haven Live broadcast. All right, so you started playing with Dave about 17 years ago. Uh, Dave has been a member of the Monsoons, so obviously your music is very intertwined. Uh, early, we talked about your songwriting process. So when you start a song, what makes it either a Monsoon song or maybe a song that you'll work on with Dave? So when I start a song, I kind of feel like, hey, this would be a great Monsoon song. I will show the guys and we'll go from there. And then there are some songs that I just save for myself. Um, I just have a feeling that, hey, this might not be the greatest song to put a huge band to it. Let's see what we can do with it on another project, something for a solo project, something just me and Dave. Or, hey, let's try something different. Let's try something with the Second Sons. So it's usually just a feeling. And yeah, I just kind of go from there. Uh, will that music be available anywhere? And can listeners maybe expect an album? Or will you perform live? We plan on coming out with a full album this year. It's all recorded. We're just in the mastering process. It should be available on any platform that you can find, such as Spotify. And we hope to play some shows live this year as well. We're looking forward to a year full of music, um, the best way we can do it, the safest way we can do it. So it feels good to put this stuff out that we've been writing and spending a lot of time on. We're talking with Kyle Megna about his latest project, The Second Sons. I'm Steve March Torme, and you are listening to August Haven Live on 91.1 The Avenue. August Haven is a supporting partner of The Avenue. Now, here's something brand new from the Second Sons. All of a sudden, on your knees. 
You are listening to The Avenue's monthly broadcast of August Haven Live, the virtual edition. I'm Steve March Torme. I'm joined by Kyle Megna, whose latest project is called The Second Sons. So anyone who's seen you and the Monsoons perform knows that this is a really high-energy group of very talented musicians. You and I have known each other for a while, and the, there are a number of guys in the Monsoons that I do music with, uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Underwood, who we both uh, appreciate and adore, uh, Ross Catterton, a bunch of really, really good musicians, and you're right, a lot of high energy. So it's fascinating to watch all of you riffing with each other. It always looks like you're having a really great time. And for those who may not know, give us a quick rundown of the members and the backgrounds of the current lineup. The group of musicians you've had as part of the Monsoons is very impressive, as I mentioned. So the current lineup of the Monsoons, we have Mr. Mike Underwood on drums. We have Kurt Scheip on trumpet. Ross Catterton on saxophone. We have Noah Harmon on keys. We have Aaron Zeppelin on lead guitar. And we have Fred Velpel on bass. These guys, they're all masters of their craft. Um, a good half of the guys, they went to school for, for music and music performance, either at Lawrence or Oshkosh. And then the rest of us, we've just been playing our entire lives with multiple projects, different stories behind that. And... We come together, and it's just a lot of fun just to get to know these guys and just to see where the songs will go. We do surprise each other when we play live, and that's one of the most fun things for me and I think for the guys as well. So these guys have even let yours truly sit in with them. I didn't say they had good judgment. I just said they're nice people. That's Kyle Magna of Kyle Magna and the Monsoons and the Second Sons. You are listening to 91.1 The Avenue's August Haven Live broadcast, the virtual edition. I'm Steve March Torme. Stick around. We've got more August Haven Live coming up. August Haven is a supporting partner of the Avenue. Let's listen to a monsoon song. There's a time and there's a place where we all get along, where we all sing a song about grace. We were born in this world, here's beauty but we all be the same What went wrong What went wrong Yes, I will always love you But I will always be true Still I have fallen down and made such a fool We have taken up pain that others didn't choose So there's nothing left to lose Now choose your cause Choose your cause yes, I know there's truth for us all Right. It's your right. 
your face You created a smile Made me dream for these miles With a steady pace Yeah, you opened up more doors Took this world and explored Made up camp where the heart Calls the home Calls the home are listening to 91.1 The Avenue. I'm Steve March Torme. This has been our special broadcast, August Haven Live. We're back one last time with our friend Kyle Megna. So besides writing new music, what else got you through the last year? So when COVID hit and the world shut down, uh, I thought it was the worst time for a career path, at least, to be a musician and a small business owner. Uh, my wife and I, we own 313 Dodge in Kakana. Uh, we do small plates, uh, craft cocktails, wine, and so on. And anyways, my wife and I, we sat down. We thought, wow, we could, you know, we could potentially lose this business that we, you know, just started in 2018. Um, but we, we put some time in. We put some thinking in. We asked our employees uh, what they thought of things. And um, honestly, we have a beautiful community supporting us and... Um, we just had a lot of time to sit down and think about creative ideas to get through a pandemic. When the odds are against you, um, it just, that kind of gave us the drive to make it through. So just honestly putting in the time because uh, there was no other option. There was lose your business or or try something and try something and fail at it and try something and fail at it again and then you know, keep on doing that until something works. So um, honestly, that for me, that has been where I've been putting my energy is uh, in into our business, uh, as well as my wife and our staff. And we can't thank the community enough. You've managed to create a great atmosphere at 313 during the pandemic with lots of outdoor seating. And you use the avenue as your soundtrack. By the way, we thank you for that. For a lot of our audience, listening to music helped them through. Was there any music that you listened to during this last year that was an influence on you? As far as music that has influenced me during this pandemic, um, I have a friend named Salman Banky. He lives in Tennessee right now. And he was actually recording an album during the pandemic. And he would send me like rough takes. Uh, I take a listen to them. I get excited about that. And then just kind of following his journey, he would send me something else when he went into the studio hey, this is, you know, 50% done. What do you think? And then all of a sudden it's 90% done. And then the full song is done. And, you know, he wrote an entire album during this pandemic. And truly stuff like that influences me. It gives me the drive uh, to create on my own. And yeah, that is something that got me through musically was just listening to my friends create. All right, so I know in this climate, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to make plans. But any plans for shows as the Second Sons? As far as live shows for the Second Sons, um, we do plan on playing live. And it'd be more of a show that would be about 50 minutes to an hour. Um, we definitely do not have, you know, three hours of material like the Monsoons do. But we would love to play live, and we have plans to do that. So stay tuned for our gigs. You can follow us on our Facebook page at The Second Sons. That's Sun spelled S-U-N-S. All right, Kyle, please remind listeners where they can find your new material. Again, that's on our Facebook page at The Second Sons. T-H-E-S-E-C-O-N-D-S-U-N-S. Thanks for joining us, my friend. We want to thank everyone for tuning in and thank you to our sponsor, August Haven. August Haven has created this unique event, which will continue in person once it's safe to do so again. Looking forward to it.
Thanks to everyone at August Haven for their support of both the Avenue and the musicians that we feature in these broadcasts. August Haven is a supporting partner of the Avenue. Now here's the Second Sons. Thoughts that got me 